this week on DSC's Trailing the Hunter's Moon. Ever since I've been a little bitty kid, I've always been fascinated by road deer. Sweden's one of those countries that most people don't even think about as having really good road deer, but actually some of the best real wild road deer in all of Europe and in all the world come from Sweden. When he stands up, there may be a little time where you've got an opportunity to take a shot before he runs. If he stands up, take him. Had an opportunity to uh, put together a group to go to Sweden to hunt roe deer. Now Sweden's one of those countries that most people don't even think about as having really good roe deer, but actually some of the best real wild roe deer in all of Europe and in all the world come from Sweden. A couple of years ago I had the opportunity to hunt with Stefan and Sophia in Scotland for red stag up in the highlands. After spending a little bit of time around them, I just absolutely fell in love with both of them as people and as far as hunters are concerned. And both of them tour wildlife biologists who have done quite a bit of work in the past, not only in Europe, but really other parts of the world, such as in Africa as well. And just being around them with the attitude that they have and their love for hunting, the love for the outdoors, I just, just knew that one of these days that there was another opportunity to want to go hunting with them. We are proud to say that we are working on some of the best privately owned areas in Scandinavia. Many of them have been managed for many, many generations regarding the wildlife management. There is normally a gamekeeper employed on them. That is making sure that we are having the right number of animals and also some good trophies in those places. First of all, it's a very nice period in Sweden to, to hunt, usually very good weather. It's very exciting and the robux is very beautiful. And the nice thing with the Robux is that all the trophies look so different. So one is not like the other. So even if you have 10 of them, they will look very, very different from each other. Ever since I've been a little bitty kid, I've always been fascinated by road deer. My mom read a story to me about a U.S. military officer in Germany that shot a really big roe deer right after World War II. And ever since that time, I've just been absolutely fascinated by him. I don't know whether it's the fact that my ancestor came from Germany area or whether it's just uh, something special about the little deer and, and uh, the antlers that they have. This is a very special evening tonight because tomorrow is the big day. And we have also seen a lot of nice roebucks in the area. So we are, yeah, we are thinking that it will be a very interesting day tomorrow. Now, like Sophia said, we are very glad to have you here. It's been a long time since we saw you last time. Uh, tomorrow is the big day. Joakim is the gamekeeper on one of the properties, Skarbosjö, that we will be hunting on tomorrow. Björn is working together with him. Jesper is the gamekeeper here that will help us on this property here. And uh, on Bassebeck, where we were scouting yes, earlier yes. today, we've also been having seen some very good roebucks. So it feels good. Now it's just up to us and Diana to make sure that we get something in the salt pit tomorrow. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 Cheers for tomorrow. Cheers, Cheers. for tomorrow. With the first day arriving before the hunt started, sighted in a rifle, had a great opportunity to do some little scouting and, and uh, find out a little bit more about the road there in the area and, and back to the camp which was unbelievable in terms of an absolutely beautiful place to stay. Gathered around the dinner table and Stefan proposed a toast to all those who were there for that particular hunt and for the next several days. I don't know about the rest of the guys but I can tell you what, I was unbelievably excited to get ready to hunt that next morning.
Sophia to me is a very special lady. I, I love the fact that she's a biologist and loves the outdoors. And she said, Larry, why don't you come with me one morning and uh, let's see what we can go find. She says, there's an area over there that we really hadn't spent a whole lot of time in. I think there's several bucks there. She says, I'm not sure it's one we want to shoot, but we really need to go over and have a look at it. If you'll carry those for me. Mm -hmm. Really pretty, isn't it? Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, this will be good for the robot. I think so, too. Obviously, it's good for the geese because they're flying as well, too. You good know, fun. the robot is like three mm -hmm. when it's nice weather and we want to go outside. Good. Otherwise, we they're like just like we are. Yeah. I'll be <laughs> Well, I'll follow you. Deer are out in the field. I mean, we're looking for a way to try to get closer to them. There's no way to make a direct approach because, I mean, they're out there in a green field where the tallest blades of grass are about six, eight inches, backed off into the brush and made a little circle kind of thing, kind of a circuitous semi-circle to try to, re to, to come out in a different area where we might have a better look at those deer. Made our little walk through the woods and got to the edge and, and started glassing and they're not, they're, they're several bucks out there. All of them absolutely beautiful. Not the ones that we're looking for, but certainly really good bucks. It's a nice young buck. It's a very nice young buck. It's a very nice, fine young buck. But he needs a couple of years more to get really nice. But uh, He's still young, you can know that because the other ones let him in. If he had been a big one, he had been, they had been fighting with him, forced him away, but now they let him be here. Good deer, good deer, but what we're looking for. Looks like he needs another year or so. Maybe. Definitely. Yeah. But we yeah. have some other nice ones we yeah. want to check out. And he's not that one that we were looking for anyway, so. The several bucks that I saw that morning with, with Sophia were absolutely amazing animals. I mean, beautiful bucks, just not quite what we were looking for, but the fact is that they live right around a power plant. I mean, within almost spinning distance of that power plant, it just shows how very adaptable these roe deer are. But absolutely beautiful animals. There, there was one there that I, it's one of those that I've so very often say you wish your life away because you look at him, you go, man, I can't wait to see what he's going to look like next year. I dearly wish I could go back to try to find that one deer sometime in the future. One of the great things about going to Europe is so very often think here in the U.S. and the states that we have some old estates. And I guess the estates have been here for a long time, but they were not really set up by anybody. They were populated by the aboriginals. In Europe, of course, there's been civilization there for many, many years. And one of the things I enjoy about hunting with Stefan is it seems like we always find a place to stay, absolutely great facilities, an old home. And, and be able to hunt some of those estates that have been in, around for many, many generations. In the instance of Sweden, it was established in 1714. I don't think the home that's there is quite that old. I think it was built back in the early 1800s. But that particular property and that home where we're gonna be staying has been in, in the, the same family for 13 generations.
we did a little scouting a while ago. Found a really nice roe deer down here. He's bedded down. There's right underneath the power poles. I mean, there's a, like a telephone line sure that runs through here. He's watched him bed down there earlier and try to ease down there, get fairly close, set up, and just wait for him to get up. And then try to figure which way he goes, left or right. And we should be able to get fairly close to him. The wind's a little bit iffy, but I think we're going to be okay. If everything works right, perhaps we can get close enough to where we might finally be able to get a shot, realizing at the same time that, that this these different power poles kind of structured so they were in a little bit of a hole in each instance. But looking, I think we might be able to get there. Okay, he's lined up between the third and the fourth pole. Yes. You see just the horn sticking up I see the horns, yes, in the grass. And um, I think that the best is that if you take the shooting stick, walk up to the next pole, find okay. a good position over there, and I will stop back here and okay. try to call and see if we can make him stand up. Okay. Yeah. Walk out and get it to the right. Okay. Okay. so that I will start to walk up a little bit to the left and make some call from that side to make sure that he's standing up, he's getting a little bit more nervous than perhaps. We're watching the buck. He is paying no more attention to anything that's going on. Stefan has moved around probably about 25, 30 yards to our left, trying to circle to get this buck's attention. And he's just not paying us any attention at all. And there is no chance at a shot of any kind till he gets up. See anything right there, but I know he's still there. He's up, I can barely see him. He's about to pick up. I was on the buck watching him, all I could see was just the tip of his horns and his ears and me Stefan was walking around to the left and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm afraid this deer when he gets up, he's going to jump and run. Guess what? That's exactly what he did. He jumped up, took off at a run, running across the field and I'm going, oh my gosh, stay on him, stay on him, stay on him. There he is right there. He's hit hard. He's hit hard. He's going down, he's going down, he's going down. Oh man. I'll tell you what, sometimes we tried to boot a low call, he wouldn't get up. He finally, when Stefan made a move, he finally did get up. He gave me a shot here a little bit farther than I really wanted. Ended up putting him down right there by the, where you saw it, the power pole. I dropped the stick several times trying to get them reset and there just wasn't any way to do it. And I used my knees as a brace and I'm following the deer, following the deer. And finally he stops, gently tug the trigger. And I know the crosshairs are on him. And if the shot, there's no question, that deer is mine. This guy knows what he's doing. This guy knows what he's doing. I'll tell you what, <laughs> this is sometimes getting too damn good but exciting by golly, man. Well done. <laughs> he stayed there with all the calling and everything that you did, you know, for the longest time. Yeah. And then well, I, I thought I heard you move, cause, and then I kind of caught you out of the corner of my eye. Yeah. And when he stood up, I, all I could see was just a little bit of his backside right here. Yeah. No, he didn't want to. I mean, the rut seems to be almost over here, so he was really tired now. Well, he's down right that's after. What, that's what we need, some luck. <laughs> we had a lot of good luck on that one. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm telling you. That is one heck of a dead gum It is, man. it is. When he ran it across here, I, his, 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 he's got chocolate colored antlers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's got everything. Oh. He's got 
good length, good long points, beautiful good colour, gosh. and now it's also going to be quite heavy, that one. Yeah. Excellent. Look at those horns. They're absolutely beautiful. That, 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 that's classic. That is absolutely very much classic. A gorgeous. Oh. Look, I mean, it almost grows together. And good long back points and front good points. Good long back points. And it's actually thick the whole way up. Yes. All, yeah, even it the carries top all this is quite thick. thick. Yeah, and yeah. this one I think may be a little bit thicker than that yeah. side. I'm so thrilled. This, this is something I want, want to shoot for a long time. I've taken one good roe deer many, many years ago. I know this is a really fantastic deer. Walk up there and he is even much bigger than what I'd imagined. Put my hands on him. Thank the good Lord I'd made a, a reasonably good shot and, and uh, put this deer down. And Oh man, I'm so excited I can't hardly stand it. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I, I'm at a loss of words. I'm telling you, he is absolutely beautiful. Bob Scott is one of the prior presidents of the Dallas Fork Club and his wife, Celia. I've had the opportunity to hunt with them in the past and some other hunts and really good to spend time with them. And as it worked out, that area, they had seen a really huge buck. It was going to be interesting to see how they proceeded to put together a plan to, to possibly take this buck because, I mean, it could very well be one of the top road deer that's going to be taken in Europe this year. The deer is there. Bob is on the sticks. Sophia is providing support for his off elbow, and Bob makes a shot. I can see the look and Stefan in Sophia's eyes going, this is an absolute monster deer. There's no question that it will be one of the best deer taken, best roe deer taken this year in, in all of Europe, and certainly in all of Sweden, but in all of Europe as well. We'd set this hunt up with several couples who, some who wanted to hunt roe deer, and some who simply just wanted to, uh, to visit Sweden, but. All those folks that wanted to take a roe deer took absolutely fantastic roe deer, probably the best roe deer they will ever take in their life, no matter where they hunt here after. 